was taking my cat to the vets and I thought, you know what, when I come back, I'll just share with you my morning tarot practice. So uh, if you have tarot or oracle cards, then uh, you can use them here in this live. And if you don't have tarot or oracle la uh, lards, cards, <laughs> then you'll still get something out of this at least for the first part of it. So I'll start with that very first part, which is um, something I call the tarot feely. Now it's like taking a card for the day, but actually when you take a card for the day and you look at it, your judgments come in. And this is a way, I call that out tuition by the way. So let me just let you know a little bit about what I do is I help intuitives that are um, in out tuition come into intuition and the thing with tarot is it can increase out tuition and um, that means using your intuition to tune out of yourself and um, into another person or trying to get some information from outside of yourself like will I get that job does he love me all of that kind of stuff right so what I do is I show you how to work with the tarot in a transformational way. Um, I have a couple of books, The Transformational Truth of Tarot and uh, The Transformational Truth of You, which is basically what the tarot is. And um, I have a game as well, The Transformational Truth of Tarot, which uh, you basically go on the hero's journey, known as the fool's journey in the tarot, and uh, transform. So my thing is about using the tarot or working with the tarot so that you transform internally, okay? Uh, and the way that the tarot does that is it's relationship-based. So however you treat it, it will mirror it back to you. It will mirror back that relationship and how you relate to it is how you relate to yourself. It's how you relate to anyone in your life. And so it's transformational. It transforms relationship with yourself and with other people and I'm going to show you something you can do today which is very quick and very fast and uh, it's part of my morning practice if you don't have tarot and oracle it's okay whilst you're here watching this you will still be able to do this exercise okay but if you were to do it by yourself you would need tarot or oracle okay so basically you start by shuffling and you take a card that you don't look at because the minute you look at it, remember the altruition kicks in and we start wondering what it means, what could go wrong, blah, blah, blah. All of those judgments get in the way. So you don't look at it and you place it between your hands and you close your eyes. And this is what I do every morning. I just sit in meditation with the card. Ah, so I relax my energy, I soften my energy and I welcome the card into my energy by concentrating on the energy I feel between my hands but I'm not trying to get anything, I'm just breathing the energy up so it's expanding and softening and it's like I'm merging with the cards. If you're a medium or a channel then you'll know this practice, it's called blending. So you're basically becoming one. I breathe it up through my arms into my being. And I breathe it out again so that I'm resonating through the whole of my being is now at the vibration of this don't like to say card let's say archetype divine archetype between my hands same for you when you're doing this and if you haven't got a card you can just do this but tuning into my card that's how you do it okay so just close your eyes and tune into this card whilst putting your hands together and allow the feeling to come in does it feel hot or cold there's an element what would it be this is not about guessing the card by the way that's out tuition this is about just tuning into the feeling I'm not concerned about getting it right we 
just want to connect with the feeling. If you get any colours or visions, whatever's there, just let it be. And then you send your thoughts up to the universe. This is the most important part. And you say, if there was a message in this card for me today, what would it be? And then you breathe that message, whether it's come through a strengthening of your feelings or visions or you're hearing or thinking something in your head, you just breathe this new higher self resonance into your body so you're vibrating that new level. And then you say thank you, thank you, thank you. And you come back round and then you can look at the card. But I'll tell you the, vis uh, the vision and the message I got first. So the vision I got was of being at a beach, you know, like uh, the wooden fences. I don't know what they're called, like the barriers that's, that section the beaches. I was really drawn to that and the tide was coming in all around it. And I got the message that, uh, you know, that would withstand so much for so long, more than maybe we give it credit for. And there was something here about being that strong and that solid and knowing that you are that strong and solid. And like the water that was around it was the waves. Yes. So let's have a look and see what this card is that's interesting because it's the eight of swords which is basically a woman bound so um the eights and we're, we're coming up to the lion's gate aren't we on the eighth of the eighth which is monday and this is an eight and eights in the tarot are about strength and swords are about the mind so it's like strength of mind and uh that message really fitted with that i think about knowing how strong and solid you are and how much you can take. So um, what I would do then is I would take a picture of this, put it on my phone, just to be aware of the message for the day. I also write it in my diary daily, my messages. What else it gives you as well as a higher self instant message is it helps you see what Claire is your strongest for the day. So um, I didn't get much of a feeling, so my clairsentience isn't that strong today, but my clairvoyance was. I really saw with this card, and then when I saw, my clairaudience came in. So that tells me that if I concentrate on visioning today, um, I'm really going to unlock a lot, yes? So that's like, the I think, the most powerful way that you can start your day. There is a, another thing that I do, um, but I won't go into that today so much, but I will show you how I do it. I do something called storytelling, okay? So it's a diary that's made of tarot. And the way that I do it is instead of writing my diary, I will look, purposely look through the tarot and I will select the cards visually, not randomly, I will choose them, um, the ones that I feel made an appearance in my day that day. And then I will, so just after this, I will do this. I will put like the date and then I'll write across here, like a card in each of these ones. And then I'll draw a line after I've finished. And I'll do that for the week. And then after the week, I'll add up how many times those cards came up. Um, and it will show me like where I'm at energe energetically, if there's any patterns that need to be shifted or anything I'm lacking. Um, and it just helps me process. It helps me process the week. Okay, 
So yeah, that's me. There's another thing I do, which isn't a daily practice, but it's a monthly practice and it's the journey. So you might have heard me say that this is based on the hero's journey, which is the fool's journey, when really the right way around is to say that um, Joseph Campbell's hero's journey actually comes from the fool's journey. Not a lot of people know that he wrote Tarot Revelations, but you know what? He was a good marketer. And people don't want to be fools, do they? They want to be heroes, but it's actually the same thing. So let me show you the hero's journey a minute. There you go. That's the hero's journey, okay? And you can see this like Frodo, um, who is, uh, he got, gets a call to adventure, yes, which is like the ring. Um, and then he meets a mentor, Gandalf, and then he crosses the threshold from his normal world, which is the Shire. And then he has the trials and failures, new skills and growth, death and rebirth, where he really gets a revelation and starts to change and nearly dies and then has the hard work and then he gets the gift or in this case throws it away. And then he returns to the Shire, but he can't stay there because he's no longer who he was. His whole world has changed. And this is what every good book or good film is based on it's based on the hero's story or the hero's journey okay um which is basically every good book or film is based on the tarot believe it or not and so within the tarot we have this journey let me show you okay so you can even see him as frodo here the fool is the call to adventure that's card zero. The next one, which is card number one, is the magician, which is meeting a mentor, right? And then we cross the threshold and there's the witchy person in the, oh, I don't remember her name. Was it uh, the white witch or something in um, Lord of the Rings? I don't know. But we've got the high priestess there. Next card, card number two, three, four and five which is Empress, Emperor and High Priest, they're your helpers. And then we go into the Lovers and the Chariot, which is basically pubescent times, that crazy time of, of growth, yes? And it's all in numerical order. Card number eight, Lion's Gate, is the strength card with Leo there. And uh, that's where strength comes in. And then we go into nine, the hermit, which is where we start to review and reflect. Ten, so that's the first numer numer numerical, numerological cycle being done. Yes, yeah, so there's a massive change point there, death and rebirth. And this first half of the journey here is very much about self-development. But then we go around into spiritual development. So we have eleven, which is justice. And the hanged man, which is basically Jesus on the cross. And then we have death because he died, yes, on the 13th by the 13th person. Death is number 13. And so what you have there is your whole revelation. Finally changes, number 14 is temperance. And she um, takes the new souls to wherever they need to be. And if that's the devil, then so be it. She's the only goddess she's the goddess iris who uh can go to the seven planes so sometimes temperance is actually shown as a rainbow um in the tarot so if you, she can take you to the underworld and then come back out again so she will take you there if you need to go and that's where atonement is the devil and the tower yes which is all about waking up and making good and then you get your gift with the star and your subconscious, the moon, your conscious, the sun and judgment, awakening is where you return changed. And there we have the world. And that is basically just the major arcana in the tarot. So the tarot is made up of two decks, uh, the major arcana, which means major box of secrets, and then the minor arcana which um, is like our playing cards it has four suits swords cups wands pentacles okay uh, you also have the court cards like you do in the normal tarot and uh, normal playing deck except it's page um, and knight instead of jack and then queen and king 
So what I do is I take you through these journeys. I actually have seven journeys in all because I split this into two, okay? So what I do is I have a membership and every month we do like a 10 day journey. So we start either on a new moon or a full moon or the day after, usually the day after. And the full moon is on my birthday this year. It's the full moon in Aquarius on my birthday this year, which is the 11th. And so on the 12th, because on the 11th we, we, um, we'll be doing the Astro Tarot Dance, which is where you're bringing in the energies, getting ready for the journey. But then on the 12th, I'm going to do a 10 day journey with my group where you go from uh, the fool and the magician and you basically live the journey. So how you do that, I'll tell you anyway, but really the best thing to do is to come into the group to learn. And if you want to know more about it, just pop me a message because um, for the whole of my birthday month, I've got a free month invite so you can just come in and do it for free and see if you like it um but basically what you do is you journey with that card you know like i just said to you that i would take a picture of my card today the eight of swords and put it on my phone um this like this yes and then you have like a visual reminder when we journey we select a picture from Google. It's really important you're not stuck to one deck for that. So you can journey without a deck. Um, it's really important that you choose the one that you feel drawn to. And I would choose two or three and meditate with them because the group has learned that choosing visually, again, can be an intuition thing and you can get a whack. Whereas when you do the meditation with them and you step into them and you're like, what would this fool give me or what would that fool give me? Then you get to feel which is the right one for you to journey with. And then you put your imaginary tarot glasses on and you go out. Or you don't go out. Quite often we're sat inside, but we're doing things like I'm connecting with you here. You know, this is still part of my day. And so you kind of go about your day and you diarise it at the end of the day. And you think about how that card showed up for you. You don't say, how did the fool show up, for instance. You would say, what happened today that reminded me of this picture? Otherwise, you'll start thinking you need to know the tarot to do this, and you don't. So you don't even need to do a journey to do this. You can do it with any card, like any card that you might have just got right now. But what I do is I take people through a structured journey. So we're going to be doing half of this journey uh, this month and what happens is you'll get to see the card come alive basically um, and it will give you a message it will mirror you and uh, yeah so that's what we do in the group we journey with the same card and then we post off our, uh, our findings at the end of the day and it's like learning the tarot with a thousand eyes just like Joseph Campbell said um, the hero with a thousand faces there you go. So if you are curious, if, if this is um, like maybe sprinkled some kind of like, oh, gorgeous nuggets that you would like to get to know the tarot um, more and in this way, which is way more experimental and transformative, then just chuck me a message, uh, Tiffany Jane Crisara on Facebook. And um, I will give you the code to come in and do a journey for free. All right. And thank you, Kelly, for letting us go live. Really appreciate it. Have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye.